At first glance, U.S. aircraft carriers look like massive floating fortresses, carefully engineered to launch and recover fighter jets with military precision. But if you look closely, you'll notice something unusual. A giant opening in the middle of the ship. It might seem like a flaw in the design, a potential weak spot in one of the world's most powerful warships. But in reality, this massive aircraft elevator system is what keeps the flight operations running smoothly, lifting over 70,000 pounds of jets and equipment in seconds. Without it, the carrier couldn't store, maintain, or deploy its aircraft efficiently. But how do these massive openings not weaken the ship's structure? What happens if an enemy targets them in battle? And could future aircraft carriers eliminate these gaps altogether? The massive gap in the middle of an aircraft carrier isn't a flaw. It's an essential feature that keeps the entire ship running. What looks like a gap in the deck is actually an elevator, one of the most vital systems on the ship. Without it, the carrier's operations would grind to a halt. A modern aircraft carrier carries dozens of aircraft, from F-A-18 Super Hornets to F-35C Stealth Fighters. But not all of them fit on the flight deck at once. That's where the hangar deck comes in, a lower-level storage and maintenance area where aircraft are repaired and prepped for the next mission. When it's time for a jet to take off, it must be lifted from the hangar deck to the flight deck, a process that happens at lightning speed. The aircraft elevators are designed to handle this task, lifting over 70,000 pounds of weight in a matter of seconds. Each elevator is a gigantic steel platform, large enough to carry a fully loaded fighter jet plus personnel and equipment. The elevators are powered by hydraulic or electromagnetic systems, allowing them to move aircraft efficiently. Once on the flight deck, the jet is quickly moved into position for launch and when the planes return, they're lowered back down for maintenance and refueling. How many elevators does an aircraft carrier have? Most modern aircraft carriers like the Nimitz class and the Ford class have three or four elevators positioned at strategic points along the ship. While some are located along the edge of the flight deck, others are placed near the center, creating that giant opening that many people mistake for a design flaw. So why not place all the elevators on the edges of the ship? Because the central elevators provide faster access to the hangar deck, reducing the time it takes to prepare aircraft for launch. In high-pressure combat situations, every second counts. Could this opening be a weak spot? Seeing a massive hole in the middle of the flight deck naturally raises some concerns. Could this be a weak point in the ship's defense? What happens if an enemy missile or bomb strikes the elevator? Before we continue, if you enjoy these deep dives into the Navy technology, please consider subscribing. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and your support helps us bring more stories like this to life. In reality, aircraft carriers are built with extreme durability in mind. The elevators are made of reinforced steel and are designed to withstand heavy impacts. Even if one were damaged, the ship can still operate using its remaining elevators. Plus, advanced damage control systems ensure that fires or structural issues don't spread. Still, the large open design does pose some risks. During rough seas, strong winds can whip through the open hangar deck, making operations more challenging, to say the least. That's why future aircraft carriers are experimenting with different elevator designs, some of which may eliminate the need for such large openings. But these aircraft elevators don't just move planes. They're the heart of the fast-paced operations on the flight deck. The deck crew, working under intense pressure, must coordinate every movement perfectly to keep operations running smoothly. So what's it like working around these massive lifts? Let's take a closer look at life on the flight deck. These elevators are constantly in motion, and the deck crew working around them must be highly trained, precise, and always alert. One mistake could mean delays, damage to an aircraft, or even serious injury. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is one of the most dangerous work environments in the world. Jets are landing and taking off just feet away 
engines roar at deafening volumes, and aircraft are constantly being repositioned. The aircraft elevators operate right in the middle of this chaos, meaning the crew must move quickly and efficiently to clear space and avoid accidents. Sailors working around the elevators have to be in perfect sync. One wrong move, like standing in the wrong place when an elevator rises, could have deadly consequences. That's why everyone on the flight deck wears color-coded uniforms, each representing their specific role. Yellow shirts are the aircraft directors, controlling the movement of planes. Blue shirts handle aircraft handling and elevator operations. Red shirts are ordnance handlers, responsible for loading weapons. Green shirts maintain the catapults, arresting gear, and aircraft elevators. And the white shirts are safety and medical personnel. Each sailor plays a critical role, and their ability to communicate quickly, often with just hand signals and head gestures, ensures that aircraft move safely on and off the elevators. When a jet needs to be transported from the hangar deck to the flight deck, everything happens on a strict timeline. The crew has only seconds to secure the aircraft onto the elevator, ensure all personnel are clear, and operate the lift without delay. Once the platform reaches the top, the aircraft must immediately be towed to the right location, whether that's a catapult for takeoff or a refueling area. Timing is everything. In combat situations, these movements must happen seamlessly or mission readiness could be compromised. To speed up operations, sailors use special high-torque aircraft tugs, which can quickly maneuver jets into position. These tugs work in coordination with the aircraft elevators, keeping the entire deck flowing like a well-oiled machine. Aircraft carriers never sleep. Flight operations run 24-7, meaning sailors on the deck work long, exhausting shifts, often in extreme conditions. In the middle of the ocean, the deck can reach scorching temperatures under the sun. At night, the elevator platforms operate in almost total darkness, with only signal wands and deck lighting guiding the way. During storms or rough seas, the elevators continue moving, even as waves crash over the deck. Despite the dangers, every movement is rehearsed and executed with military precision. New sailors undergo weeks of training before being allowed to work near the aircraft elevators, and even experienced personnel follow strict safety protocols every time a lift is in motion. What happens between operations? When there's a break in operations, the deck crew takes whatever moments they can to rest. Some grab a quick snack, while others find a quiet spot below deck to recharge before the next wave of takeoffs and landings. For many sailors, watching the elevator rise from the hangar deck is a surreal sight. Seeing a multi-million dollar fighter jet lifted into the open sky in a matter of seconds is a reminder of the sheer power and precision of an aircraft carrier. What else is stored and transported through these giant gaps? Aircraft aren't the only things being moved through these massive elevator openings. While fighter jets dominate the flight deck, there's something just as important being transported. Weapons. Below the hangar deck, deep within the carrier lies one of the most heavily secured areas of the ship, the weapons magazine. This is where the Navy stores missiles, bombs, and ammunition used by the aircraft. But getting this firepower from storage to the jets on the deck isn't as simple as carrying it up a flight of stairs. That's where the weapons elevators come in. Unlike aircraft elevators, weapons elevators are smaller, but just as crucial. They transport everything from 500-pound bombs to high-tech air-to-air and air-to-ground missiles at incredible speeds. Some of the newest carriers, like the USS Gerald R. Ford, use advanced electromagnetic weapons elevators that move faster and require less maintenance than traditional hydraulic systems. Every second counts during combat operations. The faster a carrier can load its aircraft with weapons, the quicker it can launch missions. Without these elevators, flight operations would slow down drastically, reducing the carrier's ability to respond to threats. Transporting live weapons through the middle of an active warship sounds risky, and it is. That's why the Navy enforces strict safety protocols when handling munitions. Only specially trained ordnance handling technicians operate the weapons elevators, and each transfer is monitored closely to prevent accidents. These elevators are also heavily reinforced, 
to protect against fire and explosions. If a fire breaks out near a weapons elevator, blast-proof doors automatically seal off the area, preventing further damage. But this raises an interesting question. Could these large openings be a weak spot in battle? What happens if an enemy targets them? At first glance, it seems like an easy solution. Why not just cover the massive openings in the flank deck? Would that make the carrier stronger and more secure? In reality, it's not that simple. These openings are essential for operations, and closing them off would create more problems than it would solve. Aircraft carriers are designed to handle extreme conditions. High-speed winds, massive ocean waves, and the impact of aircraft landing at over 150 miles an hour. The entire ship is built like a floating fortress, reinforced with thick layers of steel and internal bulkheads to ensure maximum durability. Despite the large openings, the structure is strategically engineered to stay strong. The deck is reinforced around the elevators, and the ship's internal framework distributes weight evenly to prevent weak points. Even when an elevator is lowered, the carrier remains structurally sound because of how the load is managed throughout the ship. But how do they actually work? Hydraulic versus Electromagnetic Older aircraft carriers, like the Nimitz class, use hydraulic systems to power their elevators. These work by pumping high-pressure oil into cylinders, which push the platform up. While effective, hydraulic elevators require a lot of maintenance and take up valuable space below deck. Newer carriers, like the USS Gerald R. Ford, have replaced hydraulic elevators with electromagnetic aircraft elevators. These systems use powerful magnets and linear motors to lift aircraft faster with fewer mechanical failures. The result? A 30% increase in aircraft movement speed, allowing for more flight operations in less time. But what happens when something goes wrong, like an aircraft falling off? Could that even happen? Aircraft elevators are designed to be fast, efficient, and extremely stable. While rare, there have been incidents where aircraft have slipped off elevators due to mechanical failures, human error, or rough sea conditions. But one of the most serious flight deck disasters in U.S. Navy history happened aboard the USS Forrestal in 1967. A malfunction caused a Zuni rocket to misfire, striking an A-4 Skyhawk on deck. The resulting explosion triggered a chain reaction, igniting fuel and ammunition leading to one of the deadliest fires on a carrier. While not caused by the aircraft elevators themselves, the massive holes in the flight deck allowed fire and fuel to spread rapidly below deck, worsening the disaster. Since then, the Navy has implemented advanced fire suppression systems and reinforced elevator structures to prevent similar incidents. To prevent accidents, the Navy has strict safety protocols in place tie-down points, secure aircraft to the platform during movement, shock-absorbing mechanisms prevent sudden jolts that could shake a plane loose, crew coordination ensures that the pilot and the deck crew communicate constantly to avoid errors. So what happens if an aircraft falls? If a jet were to slide off the elevator, the consequences would be serious. Fighter jets are loaded with fuel and weapons, meaning a crash could cause an explosion or a fire. That's why every carrier has a rapid response team, trained to handle emergencies within seconds. If a plane goes overboard, the carrier can immediately sound the alarm, which alerts crew and pauses flight operations. Then they would deploy rescue teams. If a pilot was in the jet, search and rescue teams launch immediately, and then secure the area to prevent further damage or secondary explosions. Okay, so are aircraft elevators a weak spot? Some might think that these large openings make aircraft carriers vulnerable, but in reality, they are built with safety and security in mind. Even if an aircraft were lost, flight operations wouldn't be severely impacted, thanks to multiple elevators and backup systems. However, as technology improves, could future carriers eliminate these risks entirely? That's exactly what the Navy is working on. Aircraft carriers have relied on elevators for nearly a century. But, 
as technology advances, the Navy is looking at faster, safer, and more efficient solutions. Could future carriers eliminate the need for these giant openings altogether? Who knows? The next generation, electromagnetic elevators. The newest U.S. aircraft carrier, the USS Gerald R. Ford, introduced electromagnetic aircraft elevators, the same technology used in the ship's new launch catapults. Unlike traditional hydraulic systems, these elevators use magnetic forces to move aircraft 30% faster, reducing delays during combat operations. But speed isn't the only benefit. Electromagnetic elevators have fewer mechanical parts, meaning less maintenance and fewer failures. This technology could become standard on all future aircraft carriers. But future carriers have enclosed elevators? One of the biggest risks of current elevators is their exposure to the open deck. What if future carriers redesign these systems to be fully enclosed, eliminating the giant hole completely? Some engineers propose internal elevator shafts, similar to high-rise buildings where aircraft move through protected corridors inside the ship instead of open air platforms. This could reduce vulnerability to enemy attacks, improve aerodynamics by eliminating large deck openings, and increase safety by preventing strong winds from affecting operations. The rise of drone carriers. Another radical idea is what if future aircraft carriers didn't need elevators at all? With the rise of drones and unmanned aircraft, some experts believe future carriers could rely entirely on smaller automated aircraft that don't require large storage areas or elevators. These drone carriers would focus on vertical takeoff and landing or VTOL drones, removing the need for a large hangar deck and automated storage and launch systems, making traditional elevators obsolete. While this technology is still in development, it raises a big question. Will the next generation of carriers still have the giant hole we see today? Aircraft carriers are among the most advanced warships in the world. And their giant openings aren't flaws, they're essential to their missions. These massive aircraft elevators keep the flight deck running, allowing jets to launch, land and reload as efficiently as possible. But as we've seen, they also come with risks. Could the Navy improve this system or even eliminate these openings in future carriers? New technologies like electromagnetic elevators, enclosed lift systems and drone carriers could reshape how aircraft are stored and launched at sea. So now we want to hear from you. Do you think aircraft carriers should keep these large elevator openings or should future ships find a way to eliminate them? Would a fully enclosed system be safer or would it create more problems? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this deep dive into aircraft carriers, make sure to like and subscribe. We're on the road to 50k and your support helps us make more videos like this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.